Look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. What is faith? <clears throat> now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Let's break this down. I'm going to give you a couple translations. Uh, uh, the Amplified Bible says it this way. I love it. It says, now faith is the assurance, the title deed of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. This is the part I really love. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Oh, we're going to teach today. Let me say that again, the last part. Faith, this is the Amplified, this is not my explanation, but faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. <clears throat> so when you think about that, many times what happens when we're believers, we begin, if we're not careful, we begin to navigate our walk with God predicated upon our physical senses. Well, we know there's, what, five senses? There's sight, taste, touch, hearing, and smell. When you think about it rationally, sight, taste, touch, hearing, smell has very little or no relevance to God. You did not find God through your sight. You didn't find God through your taste. Amen. Your touch, your hearing, or your smell. You found God, or rather he found you through faith. Right? Right? There's what, about, they say, approximately close to uh, approaching 8 billion people on earth. And, most, and, and, and none of them, including ourselves, found God or know God through our natural senses. So why is it when we get saved, we start navigating our life with God and assessing our walk with God through our natural senses? Even though it's natural senses, when you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. You, you didn't find God through your natural senses. God is spirit. You're human. God's in another dimension, another realm. Even though he's present among us, God is spirit, right? <clears throat> in one translation, John 4 says God is a spirit, but the proper translation is God is pneuma. God pneuma is spirit in the, in the Greek. God is spirit. The nature and essence of God is spirit. The Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but he's spirit. Now, understanding that is that we are in the flesh naturally. So the Bible says no man can please God in the flesh. Why, why is that? Because God is spirit. Again, one more time, you don't find God by your natural senses. The purpose of your natural senses were that you may be able to navigate in the earth. So when we believe and serve God, that doesn't mean we cut off our senses. That would be illogic or irrational because you need your natural senses. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, you got to keep your natural sense <laughs> to navigate in this earth. Right? I, I can't close my eyes and speak in tongues and drive down Highway 65. I'll find out real quick I need my natural senses. So every part has, has a unique uh, uh, application. So your natural senses was that you may be, be able to function as earth. But it's through faith I function with God. The Bible calls it the operation of faith. Now faith, one component of faith is believing, but like the Bible says, faith is the guarantee of something that's not seen pertaining to God. God is not seen, but my faith is evidence. So faith is not blind faith. It is actual confirmation of something that's real. God himself and the promises of God are real. And the way I approach God and know God and assess God or access God is through the means of faith. That's God's idea, not mine. That's God's doing, not ours. So the Bible says without this thing called faith, it's impossible to please God. So many times as believers, including myself, I have to recalibrate and get back to faith. Making sure that I'm not in, in my natural senses, I'm not in my mind, I'm not in my feelings. I got to understand when I'm, when I'm living for God, my feelings cannot dominate me when it pertains to God. <coughs> Amen. I got to be led by the Spirit, and I do that through faith. Amen. 
The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. It means that our sight, or which is one of our senses, uh, the implication is that we, when we walk with God, we don't walk with God according to our senses. Hallelujah. Why is it? Think about it naturally. I, I really believe the Lord gave me some wisdom here. Even your natural senses, the five senses are limited even in this earth. Do you know there are colors and sounds that you as a human cannot see or hear? You ever heard of something called a dog whistle? A dog whistle. I went, uh, a few months ago, about a year ago, with our little bubby, they had this application for a dog whistle, and I wanted to try it. So I turned it on my phone, and it had real high pitch. I didn't hear anything, but all of a sudden, I saw Bubby stick his ears up. Now, I couldn't hear a thing, but he could hear it. So just because I couldn't hear it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It was just a higher frequency. There are certain colors that scientists tell you, for example, even light. Humans cannot see ultraviolet light. Amen. Nor can we see uh, infrared light. But there are certain animals that can actually see ultraviolet light and infrared light. <clears throat> for example, like a possum, the little ugly possums. They operate at night because they can see infrared light. They see a spectrum of light that we do not have the ability to see, which tells us even as humans, our senses are limited. So you're trying to serve an unlimited God. Amen. Through limited senses. Think about it. Your senses cannot, amen, fully comprehend the spectrum of the light and the glory of God. Amen. So God has given us a better means that he didn't give the animals and no one else. He allowed us to begin to know him through faith. Hallelujah. Think about that. Even in the natural our senses are limited, even in our very environment of earth that God placed us in. We're still limited to that, much less applying that to God. There are certain smells we cannot detect. Amen? Even a dog can walk in a room and smell something you can't smell. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means you don't have the means, amen, to detect it. But God, through faith, has given us the means in which we can know him, approach him, and walk yeah. with him. Yeah. See, you cannot serve God based upon your natural ability yeah. because of the fact that it's very limited. Yeah. God said, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. But he's made his ways known to us by his spirit. So when we deal with God, we don't deal with God predicated upon our natural ability. What happens is we get so much into our natural ability, we start comparing. Oh, I wish I got, you know, I wish I could sing like her. Oh, I wish I could pray like him. And we kind of get in the flesh because we look at things, we're trying to judge things uh, based upon exterior things and not understanding that the only thing that really pleases God is our faith. At the end of the day, God is asking you, do you believe me? Do you believe my word? Doesn't matter your lack of talent or your tremendous talent. At the end of the day, God's not going to judge you based upon your talent. He's going to start with your faith. So that means when my natural senses, amen, are going crazy, when I, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is not making sense. But if I am living by God's word and I'm standing strong on God's word, in spite of what I feel, in spite of what I see, if I continue to walk by faith, I will please God. Matter of fact, sometimes God will allow you to go in situations to go contrary to your senses because God is trying to get you to, to wing you off of your senses where you learn to live by faith. Amen? Even our emotions. Amen? Our emotions and our senses are not the same thing, but my emotions, I relate to my emotions through my senses. So it's through faith we have to believe God. So when God begins to speak to you through his word, through the Bible, God begins to speak to you by his spirit. See, when it's really God's word, God's word, the word is rhema, it's word and spirit. It's the Bible and the spirit coming together as one. And when God begins to reveal his word to you, you've got to, you got to begin to believe him. And you can't worry about too much how you feel. Come on, somebody. 